started here with our post-race media availabilities for today's Tales of the Turtles 400 at Chicago Land Speedway. We are now joined by our second place finisher, Chase Elliott, driver of the number 24 Napa Brake Chevrolet. Uh, Chase, this is your second top 10 finish in two races at Chicago Land, your 15th top 10 um, here in 2017. Can you just take us through, uh, through that race for us? Yeah, just a, a much improved day from where we've been, which is nice. And, um, <coughs> you know, obviously it would have been great to, to battle with Martin a little bit more. We didn't have anything for him, but from where we've been to where we ran today, it was a uh, major, major step in the right direction and, and, frankly, where we need to be and where we deserve to be and uh, to the potential that we can run. So it was uh, nice to see that we can, you know, we can do it if all things are uh, all things are clicking, you know, in the right right way. Cars driving good, pit stops are good, and, uh, you know, race execution was nice. It was a, a pretty uneventful race for the most part. And, um, you know, I felt like typically when that happens, the <coughs> the better cars always kind of end up towards the front. And, you know, that proved to be with Martin winning. I didn't have anything for him uh, without a without a restart or something. But it also proved that, you know, we were, uh, you know, second to him. I'm not sure about the 18, uh, if he could have got back up there. But... Um, aside from those two, I feel like we could run with better by else, and that's um, a lot better than we've been. All right, we'll open up to questions for Chase. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start over here with Mike. Mike, <coughs> Mike Kimber, USA Today. Chase, could you have, uh, you think you would have had anything for Martin if there had been a short run at the end, eight, ten laps or so? Could you have done more or not? Um, if you could get in front of him, you know, on a restart or something, sure, I think you could, you could stay there for, for eight eight, ten laps, um, but I wasn't going to fall in line behind him after a restart and pass him in eight laps um, without, you know, something lucky happening for me. Additional questions for Chase? We'll go to Kelly in the back. Kelly, com. Chase, was today's performance more of just uh, an indication of what this team has worked towards, or was it just backing up what you had you had done last year? Ah, uh, well, last year isn't this year, you know, and a lot of things change from from year to year. We haven't run uh, as good, you know, through the summer months I d as we did last year. Uh, I did feel like we, you know, we peaked about this time last year, but this isn't last year, so it really doesn't matter. Um, so this is this year. We need to be better than what we've been in the past. I thought that was an improvement today. Obviously, have some work to do to get to that bunch that won the race. Um, aside from them, I think you know we were um, competitive to the rest of the field. We'll go upstairs to the press box for a question. Chris Mike Catchfence dot com. Chase, I was curious if you were confident in the team's mile and a half program, knowing how fast your car was today and the mile and a halves making up majority of the playoff schedule. Yeah, I mean it's an, it's encouraging. Um, there's also a lot of races that aren't mile and a halves so that that are that matter, uh, that are important as well. So you know it was nice to. Nice to have pace and, and some good drivability today in our car here at Chicago. A lot of the rest of the mile and a half that we go to, I guess, aside from Homestead, are uh, a little more grippy than, than this one. So um, I'm not sure what, you know, what that will have to do w with our pace or not. So we'll see when we get there. Any additional questions for Chase? All right, Chase, thanks for joining us. Good luck next week in New Hampshire. We're going to continue with our post-race media availabilities for today's Tales of the Turtles 400 here at Chicagoland Speedway. We are joined by race-winning crew chief Cole Pern with a number 78 Furniture Row Denver Mattress Toyota. Uh, we're also joined by Joe Garoni, president of Furniture Row Racing. Um, gentlemen, pretty, uh, pretty neat to start off the playoffs with a win there um, and a little bit of slime out there in victory lane. Why don't you just take us through that uh, the race there for us? Yeah, um, kind of a down day there for a little bit that we uh you know were fortunate enough to overcome um the uh 18 was definitely a little better than us you know those first couple runs and then uh you know we sped on pit road there that last segment and uh seemed like a lot of people are having issues with that today for whatever reason and uh yeah and then then we kind of battled back we we're lucky enough to stay on the lead lap that was really the key there um then we left lugs lugs off on the next stop and had to come back which was you know, kind of just poor execution on our part. We should have put them back on when we were in there, but we didn't. And either way, we just kind of took that time then to, to make some bigger adjustments on the car um, that we'd really kind of been not wanting to make just to not slow the stops down. And, uh, you know, that was really where we 
started to pick it up and you know got the balance right and martin did an unbelievable job driving back through the field there that that second stage and uh you know got us up to third got us in position and then you know was pretty confident towards the end of that run that you know we were better than the four and the 24 especially on the long run and uh yeah we we're just able to you know have a smooth uh clean execution the last uh the last stage and joe from your perspective I have to say that uh, I didn't hear the question because I was walking in when you asked it. <laughs> Just take us through the race. Oh, uh, you know, for uh, uh, Cole's pretty much explained just about all of it. But, uh, you know, starting from practice when we first got here, I just I watched these guys and see how sometimes the car is far off in the beginning of the practice sessions and what they do to get it dialed in. And then, you know, you're running up front and they come into pit and make changes. Uh, and sometimes you're like, man, you're already pulling away from the field, but you pit and you make more changes, and it's just uh, amazing, honestly, what Cole and the guys do. And you know, it comes down to that last three laps, and th this one in particular is like you just couldn't breathe. So it was nice to get it done in the books. And we're also joined by Barney Visser, the owner of Furniture Row Racing. Uh, Barney, what does this mean for the team to start off the playoffs with a win like this? Well, you know, it's. Uh Ed Lox, uh, the chief marketing officer for Toyota, is uh, from Chicago, so it's nice. It's nice for us to come into Chicago and uh, bring the trophy home again for him. Uh, it's uh, it's real nice to relax for the next couple races, but I know the guys won't. Uh, it'll give us a little bit of a break, but they won't take it. So uh, we'll just keep working like we always do. All right. We'll open up to questions for the team. We'll start up here with Jordan. And then we'll go to Bob. Jordan Bianchi, SBNation.com. This is for Cole. With the win, you guys automatically transfer to the next round. It lessens the importance a little bit of next week. And I ask that because you're probably going to have uh, a practice hold. I is that a good feeling? Or can you take me through, too, why you had the issues in uh, tech? Yeah, I told Martin for the race, I was like, it'd be a real good strategy to win today because I don't think we're going to have much practice next week. So um, it was just kind of one of those snowball uh, mornings in tech. We had a you know, small issue that on the top of the splitter um, that kind of got dinged up when they put the nose module on. And then, you know, that just kind of took us a couple times to get that fixed. And it was just kind of confusing because it was an odd scenario of, you know, kind of what had happened. And then we had the always untimely fail of the LIS at the <laughs> end after we got all that fixed. So um, you can only get through that thing so many times. Um, so, uh, Anyways, yeah, it was just that's the way it went, and um, there we go. We got probably 45 minutes or so next week, I guess. We'll go to Bob. Uh, Bob Parker, ESPN. I have two for Cole. First, does this win feel any different or mean any different than last year's win here? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, last year we you know we kind of had an up and down day too. You know, we had a tire come apart last year when we were running up front and had to go down a lap and overcome that. So I don't know, we definitely haven't had the cleanest days um, when it comes to Chicago, but you know, we got a good understanding of what we need to be, do to be good here. And you know, we really had to work for it this weekend. You know, if we were pretty far off when we unloaded off the truck and um, swung a lot more than, than we normally would. But you know, when you only race at some of these places once a year, it's kind of tricky. Um, you know, you're coming back with a new tire and new downforce rules, so it's, uh, you know, you haven't been here in a year, so so much has changed. So it takes a little bit of time to, to get a hold of it. And, um, you know, we really uh, worked hard last night trying to understand our problems from practice. And I feel like we made the right changes and were able to get the car in the right direction for today. And the second uh, TV show, them taking your tires over to the kind of the dunk tank. Um, does that happen all that often? And um, were you surprised that was done considering how many laps you've been leading? Uh, no, we've we've had that a lot. I think last year they took them like 15 times or something like that. So um, usually when you're running good, they're going to come take them. So, um, but that's fine. I mean, they're just doing their due diligence, and you know they're doing what they should be doing. So no uh, no issue there. Uh, I don't I don't think it's been as many this year for whatever reason, but you know definitely uh, you know five or six times I guess. I'm 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 guessing at that though, Bob. We'll go to Jerry and then to Mike. Jerry Jordan, kickingthetires.net and PRN. Barney, I don't see any green slime on you. It's all over Joe. Was that a team owner designation? I knew it was going to happen, and, and, and that's what I do. I, I stayed out of it. <laughs> uh, 
Mike Embry, USA Today. Uh, Cole, uh, Martin was obviously really disappointed last week despite the positives of winning the regular season and all that. Do you think the way he drove today was sort of a, res a response to that? Did he come into this race kind of a little more charged up than normal? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, after last week, he was like, I want to go to Chicago and lap the field twice. So I think he was, uh, you know, pretty mo pretty motivated, you know, this whole weekend. And even when we were struggling in practice, he uh, he kept a really upbeat attitude and, you know, kept everybody calm and focused, which was, uh, you know, just shows more of his leadership skills, you know, even more. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, coming up last week, definitely, uh, definitely motivated. And I think he, he showed that in how he drove today. We'll go to Jim. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. For Barney, um, Martin, he's mentioned this sometimes before, but really uh, seems to be kind of in grasping uh, that this this moment of in his career that he didn't think he would have ever be able to have the chance to run like some others have in such a dominating fashion. Uh, what's it feel like to you to be able to give him that opportunity? Well, you know, I, I think we all realize uh, – it's just a unique time in history in all of our lives that, that uh, this has come together. It's, it's pretty rare that you can pull together a, a group of people this talented and they will communicate well and get along as well as these guys do. Do we have any additional questions for our team? Go back to Bob. Uh, Cole, do you wish that the 18 didn't have problems so you could have seen what you guys could have done head to head against him? Uh, that's a loaded question. I mean, I like those guys, so I don't want to wish them ill will, <laughs> but I was pretty happy we weren't racing them because they were, uh, you know, even when they were back in there, they were, they were really strong and had good speed. It was just with all those long runs, they never, uh, you know, new cars would get lapped and then they wouldn't be able to be in position for the lucky dog. So they, uh, I think, you know, for sure, if they had got back on the lead lap, they were going to be a challenge. Um, they were, uh, they were really good, you know, especially early on. We, uh, we didn't have much for them. All right, gentlemen, well, congratulations on the win. We look forward to seeing what you can do in the round of 12. We are going to wrap up our media availabilities for today's Tales of the Turtles 400. We are joined by our race winner, Martin Shrex Jr., driver of the number 78 Furniture Road Denver Mattress Toyota. Martin, this is the second year in a row you've won the race. This time you got a little slimy out there in victory lane. Uh, why don't you talk about that first? Yeah, I just uh, spent about five minutes in the bathroom washing my hands and face, trying to get all the green stuff off. So it was, uh, I remember watching Nickelodeon as a kid, you know, and watching that show where it was like an obstacle course thing, and you get sli they would get slimed all the time. And I thought it was hilarious. Not so. That's it. I couldn't. I couldn't think of the name. What was it? What was the host? Bingo. That one. <laughs> and uh, it's a lot funnier to watch people get slimed than it is to get slimed. It's a lot slimier than I expected, but uh, it's definitely worth it to uh, to get that after the race today. So thanks to Nickelodeon, but. Um, yeah, definitely excited uh, to you know to be able to come to the first round of the playoffs again this year and uh, and cap it off with a win. So proud of my team. It was not an easy day by any means. You know, we had uh, had the speed and penalty, then the you know the issues with the lug nuts on the pit stop, and I think we went from last to third in eighty some laps or so in, in stage two. So uh, that felt pretty good. And then you know honestly, we just uh, kept tweaking our car all day long. It was not not where we wanted it at the start of the race and. Um, probably through you know, the first 50 or 80 laps, we were off a little bit and just kept getting it better and better. And I felt the last, by the last 100 laps of the race, it was really, really good. So just proud of everybody for uh, sticking with it all day. And uh, here we are. All right, we'll open up to questions for a race winner. Please raise your hand. We will get a wireless mic to you. We'll go to Bob and then over to Kenny Bruce. Bob Hockers, ESPN. Does this erase any of the sting from the last couple of weeks? And did you feel like you kind of wanted to make a statement today considering the last couple of weeks? You know, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think last week was last week. And, you know, we got over it by Monday or Tuesday and focused on Chicago. So, um, 
you know, just trying to move forward and, and look forward each and every week and race one race at a time. So uh, we knew that, you know, this week was a big one. And, uh, you know, we wanted to come here and just run like we knew we could, not, not you know, do anything out of the ordinary, not, uh, most importantly, not let the pressure dictate how we raced or what we did. And, and I think we did that. So just, uh, like I said, really proud of everybody for executing and uh, getting the job done. And I definitely put us behind with the speed and penalty. Um, we kind of got caught off guard there, didn't think we were speeding. But uh, as far as making a statement, you know, I don't think we really came here to do that. I think we just came here to race and uh, try to race to the best of our abilities and at the end of the day do accomplish what we feel like we're capable of. And uh, that's what we did. So, uh, like I said, just, just proud and uh, thankful for everyone, their support, their hard work and effort. And, uh, you know, luckily we were able to pull up, put it all together today. We'll go over to your far left to Kenny. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Martin, when you lost the track position, were there any close calls or any concerns by you that you 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 know you were back there where anything could happen and and you weren't going to be able to get a clean run to get back up to the front? You know, you never know <clears throat> how those things are going to go, and I felt like I was like, oh, here we go. It's like last year all over again. You know, last year here we had the tire unravel and we lost a lap, and I thought to myself, well, at least this year we stayed in the lead lap with our troubles, and yeah. so it was actually you know we'd been in this position before. The good thing about you know, if you're going to have trouble, you want it to be at a place like Chicago where the track is so wide, there's so many options. <clears throat> you know, I felt like I could run almost anywhere on the racetrack today and, and make almost identical lap time, which is is definitely um, a unique thing for, you know, this day and age. And, and most of the racetracks we go to, typically you find, you know, one or two grooves that are best, you know, better than anything else. And I felt like today there were so many options. I could just go where, where the guys weren't and uh, – and, and get by them. So, fortunately, it, um, like I said, it's, it was definitely a good track for it to happen at because of the options. Okay, and one other thing. <clears throat> Having the win now and knowing that you're clear into the next round, I know you don't want it to change your approach, but is, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Because, you know, now you guys don't have to push it as hard? Well, you know, I mean, last year we were in the same position and we went and won, almost won New Hampshire and won Dover. So, you know, I, I honestly don't think we change, and I think on top of that this year with the bonus points available, stage wins and all that, uh, as far as I know, all the bonus points we gain in this round, they, they go to our total, so we get them next round as well. You know, so it's, it's kind of like the regular season, you know. I mean, once you win that race, you're locked in, but that doesn't stop you from trying to go win again, you know, because of the points, the bonus points, and you just you want to get as many of those as you can. Uh, just for a, a safety net, you know. So from our standpoint, I think <clears throat> our, our really our out our outlook, our approach doesn't change from what it was in the regular season. We go every single week to try to win both stages and win the race, and try to get as many points as we can in case we have something happen like we did last year at Talladega. Additional questions for Martin? Go back to Bob. Bob again? <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Um, was there, did you, in the last 30 or 40 laps, did you see anything on the track that you thought, man, they better not call a caution for this? No, and I didn't. So, and I got lucky. There was absolutely nothing. There wasn't even like a hot dog wrapper or anything. <laughs> so were you, uh, <laughs> what was running, was there any, because of what's happened the last couple of weeks, was there anything running through your head like, well, what's going to happen now? No, not really. I was, I was thinking to myself, just counting them down like normal. And, uh, I was thinking, well, you know. If caution came out, we, we're going to be all right because our car was really fast on that last restart, you know. I mean, really fast. We ran the fastest lap of the race, I think, uh, when we fired off there. So I definitely wasn't worried um, as much as, say, last week when, when we knew we were probably not as good for 10 laps as a few of those guys. Um, so I kind of had that in my head. And at the same time, I was thinking with about – once he said it was about 10 to go, I was like, all right, I hope Cole is getting our tires ready for – in case a caution comes out and makes makes some changes to be good on a short run, you know, to make sure we fire it off even better. So, um, yeah, I mean, you you never want to say, oh, geez, what the heck's going to happen now? You know, you just you try to always be positive, but you're kind of thinking in the back of your mind all the time, what are we going to do if it does come out, and are we going to be prepared? But um, I actually today was – I really wasn't worried because I knew that our car was fast on a short run, and, uh, and our pit crew, the, the last time we stopped – had a really good stop, so they had that confidence as well. So I wasn't nervous about it at all. Oh, hell yeah. Five years ago, I would have been like, 
please, please, no caution, please, no caution. Because I lost a bunch of them. You know, there was <coughs> – when I was uh, at MWR, we lost a bunch of races before we finally won our first one, dominating like that and come in on the last pit stop and get beat out of the pits and, you know, it would be over. So, um, for sure, five years ago, yeah. We'll go to Jim. Jim Hunter, motorsport.com. Uh, Martin, you um, you mentioned, I think it was on television, about uh, being able to experience what you've seen some other dominating drivers have, the types of seasons. And I asked uh, Barney about it when he was in here, and he just he said that it's just so rare to watch one group of people work ex so extraordinarily well together. When you look back at your career, um, how does how does this unit compare to some of the other uh, places you've worked? Uh, as far as do you see a big difference as to being able to accomplish things this season? Um, I would say that because we've been together for three years as a group, um, that yes, I've never been in a position like this. Um, I feel like once we, when we first got together, we just clicked extremely well. We had similar backgrounds. We have similar approaches. We're very different people but we complement each other well at the racetrack and, and communicate really well and have a lot of respect for each other. And, you know, I've, I, I feel like I've had a few people around me like that before. You know, Chad Johnson sticks out in my mind as one of those guys, but we never had the support group around us, you know, to get to the next level. You know, so I feel like right now we just have everything. We have the right people. We have the right support. You know, we have the right guys behind us. We have the right information coming in. Uh, we really just have it all going on for us right now, and things are clicking, and we're taking advantage of it. Um, so to answer your question, it, it's – it's. I definitely – without a doubt, I mean, you have to say this is the best position I've ever been in. You can't deny it. You can't argue it. Um, and But it's, at the end of the day, it's a lot of it's just people, you know, and communication and confidence. And, you know, you look at – you look at the other guys that have, that have everything the same that we do. And look how we're running. So, I mean, that's that just really shows that our guys and, and the communication and, you know, kind of just how we're clicking right now is the difference. It's just uh, everything's going the way we need it to. Any final questions for Martin? Yep. Sharon from Fan for Racing. Uh, along those same lines, uh, I wanted to ask you, what's different this year over the previous two years that could make the difference for you this year? Just experience, I think. Um, confidence, you know, we've been in this position the last two years, really. You know, last year we had uh, we had the speed that we have now, I feel like. We just, we didn't have it as consistently. Um, two years ago, we didn't have the speed, we just executed well. So now I feel like we've got all of that put together this year where we're very consistent. We really don't have any tracks, I feel like, that we're not good at. And um, so it's just, uh, you know, just being confident each and every week, no matter where we're going, I think is the difference. We don't really have any big question marks on the schedule anymore. Maybe Martinsville is probably our worst track still, and, and I think that's about the only one. Talladega, of course, is a wild card, but, you know, Martinsville, we haven't had winning speed there yet. Uh, we've been getting closer. I feel like we've been, you know, between maybe fourth and seventh the last few trips there. So we need to get better, but... Um, I feel like everywhere else we can go and win, and that's really the difference. You know, we've just been chipping away at all these tracks and putting together a good notebook and um, putting together some ideas that just seem to work and, and continuing to uh, to go back and, and play on that. So just uh, repetition and, and time together, I think, has just helped us get better and better each year. Thank you. All right, Martin. Well, congratulations, and good luck next week. Thank you, guys. Yep, appreciate it. See you next week.